I'd like to have just a dinner with wild plants. I want to collect as many edibles as I can after this fire. Tubers, that's the part you want. Very tasty raw. Dark green tea, that's a real good tea actually. So we're finding quite a few mushrooms here. It's almost like a treasure hunt. So we're gonna take this little one home and then hopefully we'll be able to give it a second chance. Two cubs. Hi, I'm Greg Ovens, and this is Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. There we go. Oh. Good morning. I got to a spot here late last night where there was a fire, I want to look into uh, finding some rail mushrooms, make something nice with them. Joe's here somewhere, and uh, but I got here late and it was really hard to find anywhere to set the hammock. I had to tie it to the rope of the boat and a burnt tree that fell down here. It was very steep, so there wasn't really adequate spots, but I'll show you my setup. And uh, just explain that uh, we came over this way near a town called Vernon to bring that little baby bear cub that Jeanette found. It took a while to get permission to catch it, bring it to the folks that do the rehab up in Smithers, Northern Lights. So we met all the crew from the TV show, or most of them, and uh, it was pretty cool to meet them and give them the little bear. Now he's got a fighting chance to be released next year. So hopefully we can get in on the release next uh, summer too. You don't like being on? <laughs> uh huh? We watched you on the on the show. I avoided it as much as possible. Did you? <laughs> well, that's the same as my daughter. She doesn't like to be on video either. But season, season. I'm not in season. Two. I like watching myself on TV. Oh, good for you. Yeah. I don't. You don't? <laughs> no. No. Okay. Nope. So we're going to take this little one home and then hopefully we'll be able to give it a second chance. Um, mm -hmm. It was found really unresponsive and weak and has a couple of days of food in her now and her or him, I don't know. We'll see yeah. what the next week brings and how well it's doing and hopefully yeah. we can change this around. Well, that's great. We, we certainly will keep you posted and get you some video of this little one as it gets better. Wow, well, we'd appreciate that. Yeah, no problem Thanks. at all. Okay. You're welcome. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you too. But I'll show you my setup and then we'll go and find Joe. He's down the hill here somewhere. This was kind of a spur of the moment trip because of the bear. But while I'm here, I may as well check the fire where he is. Let's see what he's up to. Okay, Finn, we're going to go try to find Joe. In the truck. Morning. <laughs> Morning, Greg. <laughs> so what I'd like to do uh, today is go through the fire here. I know there's morel mushrooms, collect some of those. But I would like to see after a fire like this, how many edible wild plants can we find? And I'd like to have just a dinner with uh, wild plants today. There is a lake I might try to fish and see about an absolute wild dinner after a fire. Uh, I know that uh, I've seen a few plants. I see some Solomon seal, or false Solomon seal and Solomon seal. I want to collect as many edibles as I can after this fire. It's amazing how it's greened up. Like a lot of these plants have more light now and are doing quite well. So I've seen uh, bluebells, yarrow, spirea, paintbrush, uh, monkey flower, all kinds of plants. A lot of them not edible, but let's see what we can find in this fire that's edible the year after the fire. That'll be cool. Well, there we go, caraway, not ready. There's the seeds. To dig up some of this false Solomon seal. 
I don't think Joe's tried these kind of plants, so. We're just going to fry up these little tubers, uh, just like garlic and some butter. The whole root is edible. They do suggest that you cook it. I eat it raw, but um, they say it can affect people differently if you don't cook it. Some people may upset their stomach, but I've never had a problem. But I am going to cook these ones up. But you have to be very careful with the carrot family because um, some of the carrot family is the most toxic in North America, like water hemlock. So uh, really be careful with the carrot family. Really research that one. I'm also going to collect some dandelion root. Soak them in water because they're pretty bitter uh, unless you soak them for a while in water. Most nutritious plant that you can find in the wilderness is dandelion. You make a coffee from the root, dry it, grind it up as a coffee substitute. Young leaves, the whole plant's edible. Full of uh, nutrients, all your vitamins, even protein. So never forget about dandelion. I'm gonna see tomorrow if I can find a bit more plants. I'm uh, gonna cook up some liver and onions, I've got that. Joe's going to give me some mushrooms to throw in with it, some morels. So that'll be good. Have something good and then uh, see what else I can find tomorrow. And maybe find this little lake and see if there's any fish in that. Would be cool. Really like liver too. Morels. Probably fry the morels and the onion first. Joe was buying morels this year and uh, not doing as much picking on his own. Now these guys are just small, I'll just throw them in whole. Alright, get this on the fire. And throw the uh, liver in, should be a good dinner. Yeah, dude. I can put that great across. You, uh, yeah. I'd like to take this handle right off. And this one's all loose. That's what I should do. I mean, there's no use for this handle anyway. Try the morels. I did have a taste already. Very good. I like onions too. Fried onions. Mm -hmm. Liver doesn't take very long to cook at all. I just love the taste of liver. Very good. Well, morning. Looks like a nice day. Um, Joe and I are going to head up the creek here a bit and look for some morels. And uh, I'm going to see if I can find some more edible plants along the fire here. It's just interesting to see what grows back right after a fire. And then uh, maybe get to the lake and see if there's any fish in there. 
That would be cool. It's going to be a nice day. So we're finding quite a few mushrooms here in the cedar grove near the creek. But you really got to look for these. They're so camouflaged and some of them are just barely poking through the cedar needles. And you just see the top of them. So it's almost like a treasure hunt. You really got to look. You do. Gonna be a millionaire. Oh my beauties. That's a huge one. Where did you find that? In the bush. Let's see it. <laughs> that big, big one. Look at that. Where did I find it? In the bush, Joe. <laughs> Greg and I were just walking back to the car and I spooked a ruffle tailed grouse out of its nest. I'm not gonna get too close because no, we don't we'll leave it alone. Disturb it, but that's it right there, Greg. Look at that. Eggs. We're going to leave her alone. We'll get out of here right away so she comes back. We don't want the eggs not to hatch because she's gone too long. So, But that's cool. Well, I found the little lake in behind me here that I wanted to try to put the boat in and catch fish. But there's no way to get the boat to it. So it's just a cliff with trees. There's no access to it. So... It looks like we'll just be eating uh, some wild plants tonight. I do have a little bit more liver. That's too bad. I mean, I just saw this on the map and, and now I found it, but absolutely no access. What do you do? Got some stinging nettles here. Mind you, this little area didn't seem to get really burnt. We we'll get some of those, we'll make a tea with some fireweed. I like my stinging nettle. Good cordage plant in the fall. Throw in some horsetail with it. Nope, I got stung that time. And there's some burdock. So I'm going to probably dig some of those too. Have the roots and the tea all in one pot. So I'm just going to cook up my false Solomon seal roots, and my dandelion roots, and my burdock roots. I really like burdock, if, but you got to get the young plants. I'll just scrape with my fingernail, clean them off like peeling in a carrot kind of thing, so that they're clean. Now I can get a knife and do this too. Then what I'll do... Once I have my roots boiling away, is I'll throw my nettles, everything's starting to wilt already, my nettles and my horsetail in there. I'll have a tea and some cooked veggies. And maybe try to catch a burbot for the first time this year. It's on the way home, maybe camp there and try to catch a fish tomorrow maybe. So what you can do with the burdock, is it's the inner part you want. You can basically just break the outer skin off. See how that peels nice? And it'll just peel right off. And that's the part you want. See?
So now I've had this uh, boiling for about 20 minutes. It takes about that long. Kind of yellowish water already. Now I just throw in my horsetail stinging nettle and just let that sit for another two minutes. I've got a tea and my veggies. Maybe stir it around a bit. And uh, I just noticed that right here we got some lamb quarters, young. I just like that raw. And some miner's lettuce. Good salad plants, good raw, both of them. Very tasty raw, both of them. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see the color, but a dark green tea, but nice and dark. I'll let that cool for a minute. My Solomon seal. Ends will be nice and uh, tender now. Little on the bitter side, but Pretty tasty. Dandelion root. That kind of is like carrot in a way. That burdock root is uh, a little bit woody, even though it was quite a young plant, but maybe it's something to do with. Uh, growing after the fire I don't know because usually I like them better than that but I will eat this up this is very nutritious tea very nutritious uh, root plants the ends on the uh, Solomon seal are very tender a little bit on the bitter side though too and like I say maybe again that's because it's near the fire or growing alongside the fire the inner part is sweet. See what the tea's like with the whole combination of plants and roots. I don't usually do it that way. I usually will just do stinging nettle tea or pineapple weed tea or, you know, uh, I don't usually mix it like this. But it's going to have uh, more nutrients than just a single plant tea. that taste like it's like I taste the horsetail and stinging nettle that's what I taste that's a real good tea actually mm, that's a great tea believe it mmm very very good tea and full of nutrients because of cooking the roots and the tea together Probably about the most nutritious green tea you could have in the wild. I'm going to have to do that more often because that's really good tea. I could drink that all day long. So I got about halfway home and I don't like driving in the dark so I decided to build a fire. I picked up a steak along the way, heating up a rock on the fire, going to have a steak and uh, call her a night but it was an awesome adventure it was good to see joe and get a few mushrooms in the next video i'm going to be making a mushroom soup that is dynamite so you'll have to stay tuned for that relax by the fire maybe even try a little fishing in the lake here in the morning before i head out I don't really have time to do any fishing, but I want to thank you subscribers and viewers in general for watching. Thanks to uh, Northern Lights for taking the little bear cub. And July 1st, they're having an open house and I'm gonna to try to be there. So hopefully I see you there if you're in the Smithers area or anywhere from BC or wherever you're, you uh, come from. If you can make it up there uh, and support the cause. Fantastic organization. It was nice to meet them, 
and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. We got to pack up and get out of here. Cubs.